up guys? Sorry I haven't had a chance to shave yet. I fixed shit in your face. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe. My Facebook uh, group is down below if you guys want to check that out or you have some questions you need answered or maybe you just want to show me a video of something that's going on. Well, you can do that on my Facebook group. You can ask your questions. So if you join the group, good to go. Don't forget, I make these videos for you guys. I don't make it for me. Dropping a like and a subscription, even if you don't come back, helps me and makes me want to make more content. So just think about that for a sec. Today I got the dreaded topic of knock, engine knock. And I'll be honest with you, when you hear knocking from an engine, it doesn't matter what kind unless it's diesel, because a diesel knock is pretty normal. But if you hear knocking from your normal engines, whether it's four stroke, two stroke, rotary, any one of those, there's something to be concerned about going on with your engine. If you don't panic slightly when you hear engine knock, then you're not human. Let's just put it that way, because normally a knocking engine has pretty devastating consequences if not taken care of quickly. And sometimes it's a non-retrievable engine, but today we're gonna to talk about a few causes of engine knock, especially when it comes to motorcycles, because honestly, there's a plethora of reasons of why a motorcycle engine knocks. And some of them are very easy to solve, and some of them take a lot of work to solve. We need to establish a good guideline for you so that you can go through and try to figure out what's going on with your engine. Kind of an old school mechanic. I learned from a lot of older guys. And um, a lot of you most likely do not have a stethoscope available to you, but if you do, great. You, you should probably already know how to use a stethoscope. For those of you that don't know what a stethoscope is, it's a assisted hearing device that goes in your ears, kind of like the doctors have when they put it on your heart and they listen. Except this one has a long rod and you put it on things on the engine to hear exactly what area the sound is coming from on a bike. Most of you guys will not have that available to you, so I'm gonna give you another way to test this stuff. If you get a long flathead screwdriver, right, and you put your ear on the handle end and you touch the other end to the engine, wherever you wanna hear the knocking, don't put it in your ear, but put it just outside your ear and that variation right there, push it against the side of your head, put a little pressure on it, you can actually hear all the sounds coming from that exact spot on the bike through your ear and into your head. It's really weird, it's a weird sensation to go through, but it is the easiest way to create a homemade stethoscope that works really well if you have decent hearing. With that being said, let's get started here on common spark like common knock engine knock like what causes this why why is my engine knocking let's start with some simple ones here okay a lot of bikes come with tensioner chains and timing chains and all that kind of stuff and and honestly those parts wear out and when they wear out you get slack in them and when slack is created it throws the timing off on the bike or the timing curve causing the engine to slightly run out of sync which causes the cylinders to kind of lock and fight each other while they're trying to idle and run. So sometimes you get knock on the low end and not knock on the high end, okay? That's pretty common, but that could also mean a whole bunch of other things is going on. But I find that a lot of times when you hear real, real sloppy and skippy knock that kind of comes in and goes and comes and goes, that's a lot of times a tam, uh, cam chain tensioner. Also, accompanied with that can either be a high-pitched whining sound or a lot of click clacking uh, and, and ticking noises can also be associated with that, but sometimes not. Sometimes it's just a little knock that's happening. It might need to be tightened, loosened, or a new one needs to be put on. That's a, that's a big one. Spark knock, okay, you can have horrible spark knock on an engine, and that means that it definitely needs to go in and get looked at. However, that does not mean engine damage has been created yet. Some of these guys you cannot track down. Some of these just need to be looked at by a shop. Like spark knock is really hard to figure out yourself if you have spark knock problems, okay? But when it stuff comes to stuff like cam chain tensioners and stuff like that, a lot of times you can just put your ear on it and if you hear the, the, the chain making a whole bunch of noise inside there and you're like, oh, okay, well, let's try to tighten it down a little bit and see what happens or try to loosen a little bit, see how the engine takes it, okay? But spark knock, that's one of those ones that's really difficult to solve and track down without taking it to a shop. That's somebody has to get in there and Mr. Tunum Wizard needs to resolve things and figure out why you're getting spark knock. Um, unless you're really talented yourself, 
that's one way to do it, but uh, spark knock is a difficult one. The biggest one that I see outside of rod bearings, and we'll get into that because that's a whole nother part of this, okay, is, and, and guys, I may forget a few reasons why engines knock, to be honest with you. I'm trying to do this list out of, uh, off my head here, um, but these are the most common ones that I run into. Um, out of sync engines, especially carbureted bikes. A lot of carbureted bikes uh, tend to go uh, with lack of maintenance for long periods of time and then they're traded person to person, sold to this person, sold to that person. Nobody synchronizes the carbs and then you buy it and then you're like, what is that noise? Why is it knocking like that? I don't understand. It only happens at idle. It doesn't happen when I'm revving the engine. What's going on here? A lot of times that is actually caused by the engine being out of sync. So if you think about it this way, a lot of these two cylinder or two to four cylinder bikes, if they're four strokes, um, they normally have multiple carburetors. And let's say this carburetor set, so you got two, two carburetors over here and two over here. These two are running faster than these two over here, right? The butterflies are open a little more on this one and less on this one. What ends up happening is the cylinders are moving faster on the right side of the bike and the other ones are moving slower. And what you end up getting is a binding sensation in the engine. Dun, 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 dun. The engine's running out of sync, right? And if it's running out of sync, it's causing the engine to jerk, which creates a knocking sound, right? So bear that in mind. A lot of times that you get knocking, it's just caused by synchronization issues. It's not like, oh my God, the bike is totally done. Oh my gosh, I've got sloppy rods in there and the whole bike's falling apart. And a lot of people do that. They panic immediately when they hear rod knock and they go, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell this bike. Uh, I hear something coming out of the engine, I'm gonna get rid of this bike. And that happens quite often. I see that on Facebook all the time. Like, well, did you synchronize? I'll even hit them up with a message like, hey bud, have you tried synchronizing the carb show? Oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, that's why you take it to a shop and you maintain it. I don't have that kind of money. Well, then you probably shouldn't have bought a, bought a motorcycle if you're not willing to work on it yourself and you don't have money to take it to a shop, you probably shouldn't have bought a motorcycle in the first place. Just don't. Unless you can afford a brand new one, stay the fuck away from bikes. No offense, but stay the fuck away from bikes. You probably shouldn't be on one. If you can't work on it, you can't afford to take it to a shop, don't get into motorcycles. I'm just gonna say that right now. Save yourself time, hassle, energy, effort, all that stuff. Just stay away from bikes. It's not your thing. Don't do it. Okay, that's a big one. Carburetor issues, big one. There can even be misfiring taking place. Let's say a carburetor is not producing fuel, right? You've got three carburetors working properly and one carburetor's not, or two carburetors. Oh man, then the engine's really out of sync. Boy, then it sounds like it's tearing itself apart internally, you know? It just sounds horrible. Like, oh my God, I'm going to get rid of this bike. A lot of times misfiring happens, whether it's a coil, spark plug, wire, whatever, you know, carburetor issues. That's, it's just, I mean, guys, you got to look into it. Remove each carb or remove each spark plug. Make sure you're getting spark. You know, you can check. There's certain things you can troubleshoot and check on. Um, <clears throat> but I think, I think that's my list of basic ones that you can solve fairly easily just by either doing it yourself or taking it to a shop or just checking it out. A set of vacuum gauges are like 50 bucks. Get yourself some vacuum gauges. Everything else outside of that was just kind of troubleshooting. I mean, you can order parts from eBay for your bike. It gets easier. Now we're gonna get into things that are, that are unfortunately normally bike ending things. Um, if you're somebody who likes to rev your engine a lot, and, and this is part of the sport bike world, man, people like to tack out their revometer, you know, their, their rev limiter on their sport bikes and make them go, you know, and that's so bad for your engine. You can rev up, but you shouldn't be taking it red line. The engine needs a load on it. If it doesn't have a load, then you're just pushing that engine to its absolute max with no friction or strain on the engine whatsoever for those parts. They're just free balling inside there, man. And that's normally how you end up spinning a rod or spinning a bearing, throwing a rod. Those things happen when you free rev your engine like that with, without a load. And a lot of sport bikes end up getting heavy knocking and spun bearings because a lot of people don't understand. It's cool to rev your engine, but you shouldn't like redline it and you know, and you know, cause that, that's just what young minds, Young minds think it's a cool sound, so they do it. You know, probably not as big of an issue on newer bikes, but when a bike gains five, six years on it, and it's got upwards of 20,000 miles, and you're still out there going, what's up, you think I'm cool? Check out my exhaust. 
Vroom, vroom, what's up? You know, then you're just asking to blow your engine up. That's essentially what you're doing. So over the time, over time of just absolutely racking it really hard, taking off, sport bikes get a lot of punishment. The, the transmissions get a lot of punishment. The engines take a lot of punishment, especially on 600s. And you know, a lot of the super sports, like I have a super sport now, but a lot of the super sports and base, baseline 600s take a ton of punishment. And that's all because it's transferring all of the power from the cylinders straight to the crank. And what's connected to the crank? The rods are connected to it. So when you're just giving her the beans constantly, you're putting all that pressure on the rod bearings. And a lot of times what happened is over time, especially if the bike wasn't maintained, wasn't cared for, you weren't synchronizing, no maintenance was being done, you just end up spinning a rod or a bearing. You end up throwing a rod or spinning a bearing really bad. And if you want to hear what that sounds like, there's tons of YouTube videos to show you what a spent bearing rod sounds like. It's horrible. It starts off a little tiny knocking noise, and from there it continually just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, bent, bent rod. Let's say you, you know, hydrolock your engine. It's another big one. Flood it and then keep trying to turn it over and turn it over, and all of a sudden it can't compress all that extra fuel in there, and it wrenches the piston up and. <coughs> bends the rod that happens too um you know what can you do it's time for a rebuild there's nothing you can do for that engine same thing with a spent bearing you, you, you spin a bearing you're rebuilding i mean or selling the bike to somebody who's willing to do it or taking it to a shop and spending a fortune it's just it's just better to care for your bikes guys i think so anyways i, th I think that's where i'm gonna go with this i'm sure there's other things I'm missing right now and not able to think of for when it comes to engine knock, but I've been talking for like almost 12 minutes straight. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good place to start um, when it comes to knocking motorcycle engines. Um, Cause those are going to be your big comic. Those are going to be your common ones, your basics. Those are going to be the ones that unfortunately plug it. But, but look, there, there's four simple ones that can be resolved with just maintenance. If you hear knocking, don't get scared unless it's really bad. If that's really bad, then you probably have reason to be like skittish. But if, if you rev it up and you just hear a little, da -da 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 -da, you can hear a little knock or something, it's probably solvable with just some very simple stuff. You know, if you're worried that it's a rod bearing, just get your screwdriver out, put it on the bottom of the engine down each crank. So if you just kind of go down the crank on the front of the engine on the bottom side with the, the you know, screwdriver push you, you can normally hear if there's something going on with one of the cylinders, right? Just by kind of going down the bottom of the engine. So, or you can just put it directly on the crank and go, is that going for my crank? The problem with that though, is that you're not really gonna hear the bearing tick, you're just gonna hear the heavy knock that comes from it. And that could be, like I said, a plethora of different things. It could be, you know, whatever. You guys get it. Out of timing, could be a lot of different stuff. So, Anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, if you guys were wanting to get in touch with me, like I said, Facebook in description of video. Uh, there's other stuff there. If you want to support my channel, there's tons of ways to do it, guys. Smash the like button, show some love. You guys get it. So, all right, I'll catch you on the flip, man. See you in the next video. Toodles, shitheads. <laughs> Are you sure this is okay? You're in country, dude. Live a little. Now she's pretty sensitive, so go easy on the throttle, okay? All right. <laughs>